uh, well, welcome, welcome, well, welcome, very, very much conversation. Pleasure to welcome the program. Lovely lady, a revolutionary in the best sense of the word. Her name is Del Williams, and she is the founder of an institution here in New York City, a center here we're going to be talking about, called Eve's Garden, for which I congratulate you. And she's also the co-author, along with Lynn uh, Vanuvin, Vanucci. Van Vanucci, of a book that we'll try to show here at the beginning, and it's called Revolution in the Garden, Memoirs of the Garden Keeper, and that being Dell Williams, and I think this book is this book and the institution and the person of Dell Williams is well known to many. Feminist extraordinaire, friend of the world, and Dell, welcome so very, very much to conversation. Thank you very much for inviting Boy, me. Well, am I pleased to be able to have you on the set uh -huh. and so forth? And I wonder if you could. I've read the book; it's really well written, and it's got not only a great deal of good information; it's got a sense of well-honed humor. Uh -huh. which I appreciate always, and right. uh, I wonder if you could share with us your background, born and raised, a little of the education of your own personal background, and then how you got around to uh, setting up this institution in, in support of feminism and one half of the world population being the female gender. Okay, well, mm -hmm. it's a long story, yes, so I'll try to cut it short. Mm -hmm. Born of a woman who was a tennis <coughs> champ, mm -hmm. she defeated uh, won the women's singles for seven times wow. at uh, at the tournaments held by the city courts. Uh -huh. So yeah. my mother was a real tennis yes. champion. Yes, I and uh, she even challenged a man to 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 uh, for a game, Sounds like doing Billie the Jean same King. thing that Billy yeah. Jean King did. And as a matter of fact, I'm writing to Billy Jean King to tell her that. Uh -huh. That my mother did that 40 years before. She challenged a man. She said, if I beat you, that means that you will agree for women to play tennis against men. Really? That's right. very interesting. Right. And she won. And she did. And that from that day, they played mixed doubles. So mixed the, doubles. Mixed okay, doubles. Yeah, mixed right. meaning men and women. Yeah, that's can play interesting. Together. Yeah, they just allowed uh, in the uh, you know in our uh, governmental system to allow the women to right. take full responsibility for like marching into the war and fighting hand to hand and right. everything. Right. Right. And I wonder a lot of people are wondering about that. And yes. But that's another march along that line, huh? Right. And mm -hmm. then my goals in life at that time. Yeah. I couldn't make up my mind whether I wanted to be a journalist or an actress. Well, wait a minute. You had your mother being a tennis champ, and then you went and you. Oh, Anna's the tennis champ. Mm. Okay. I just want to mention this. Sure. Came the revolution. The uh, revolution. The Depression. Oh, yeah, right. Because if the Depression had not started, uh -huh. I really feel that my mother would have gotten on to go on to the professionals uh -huh. and continue to play tennis. You have one, you have but the Depression started, and my father, who was a dress designer, yes. uh -huh. designing clothes for the, for the likes of Bendel and, and Bergman Goodman, uh -huh. yeah. lost his business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know what the depression was. Yeah, so horrible. my mm -hmm. mother had to turn in her tennis racket for for a sewing needle, uh -huh. and uh -huh. went down and worked in the factory uh, sewing dresses, the hems of dresses, for two cents an hour. Wow! So yeah. there was a real shift yeah. from comfort to poverty. Yeah, right. It had been comforting. Yeah. They come from Europe, had they not? Or yes, something? they yeah. both came from Russia uh -huh. and they met in France. Uh -huh. And my father was also, a, uh, then when he came here, he taught her tennis. Uh -huh. And he also uh, was a sport on a bicycle, racing bicycle. Yes. Uh -huh. My parents were very athletic. They were very athletic, but he was also, very, he had a business. He yeah, he had a business. Ongoing, really successful yes, yes. business, working for, you know, designing for the Yes, large his dresses yeah. were on the fanciest woman in New York City. That's right. Until the Depression. Yeah, so. and the Depression, and then it, it really laid things low. Right? Oh, God. God, you so had long. pictures in the book. We can't go into them all. Yeah. But you had one, and you said, "This is a picture of my mother, the only one I know of her smiling." Yeah. So that she was under a great deal of distress. Oh yes. One would say, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead. I'll get them. Here's glasses. Yeah. Here, yeah. Okay. 
So yeah. that was difficult. That's yeah. why I couldn't go to college. Uh -huh. I, you know, I would have gone to college because I was always a curious kid who wanted yeah. to know everything yeah. there was to know about everything. That's important. I still do. Yeah, right. I can see At 90 still. years old, I still want to yeah, know what's new. You yeah, know? right. But anyway, I went into the world and became uh, a secretary for a while. Mm -hmm. And then I became, then I went, then I went into the army. You went into the and army and enlisted yeah. as an, in the army. Was that during the Second War or? At this the is end? Second World War. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. And uh, I had a good job in the army. Yeah. I learned to be a morning report clerk, uh -huh. which means you take attendance in the army, mm -hmm. and um, nobody knows what you're doing. So I was my own boss. But in addition to that. Uh -huh. The head of the WAC detachment, yeah. Uh, Women's Army Corps, yeah. yeah, Women's Army Corps, mm -hmm. decided to produce a show, and she got together all the people who had some background in theater, and I did. You had had some background in yes, theater because by the time you went in. Yeah. By the time I was eighteen, I was right. entertaining at the local uh, canteen. Oh, I see. We were before you up, went into the service. Yes, yeah, before I, I went 18, into the yeah. service. And you I, had aspirations I was for a show singer. business? Yeah, so you I were went, a singer? Yes, I was sing a singer. Dance? Sing and dance. Well, yeah. mostly sing. Sing, yeah. Sing. Uh -huh. Okay, so there I was in the army, yeah. being in the show. Uh -huh. I was the comedian in the show. So I did all the funny, port, funny yeah. parts. Yeah. And we toured the South for about almost two years. Like Danny Kay or yes. something, or that it kind of It was like thing. the Army shows, yeah. but it was the, the, the Army doing it. Yes, it's right, like right, the, right, uh, right, right. What do they call those shows? Uh, uh, they I had forget. a name for them. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah the initial. And Bob Hope was great. There, yeah, right? yeah. And the troops and that. And right. that was the time when the whole nation, yes. uh, uniquely, I think, in terms of the modern experience, was 1,000% behind fighting the fascism in Europe. Right. I think it was, the nation was really was united. Was united, right, yeah. right. And everything went into that. Uh -huh. Everything stopped except the war. Effort, yes. Really, you know. And yeah. anyway, so time goes on. Yes. And I got a job in, in an advertising agency, and I finally became part owner of an advertising agency. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I did well in that, well mm. enough so that I could buy myself a house on Fire Island. Wow, that's great. And, you know, I had enough to to get by. Certainly, I felt as if I had arrived. So you're a bit of an entrepreneur. Yeah, also. I was an you entrepreneur. You started a business and it was successful. Yes, right. right. And so you were successful and you're still young. You're 20 or something like that. Yes, or? I was still in my 20s. So you were by successful the 20s. right out of the get-go, out yeah. of the gate, as right. they say and everything. Oh, I think I was in my 30s by then. By then you were, yeah. yeah. When is it that but you But the went, Army, yeah, what yeah, happened yeah. is how, how I segued into Eve's Garden. Uh, well, is, that's a is, long way along. Yeah. I'm wondering because you had a stint out in Hollywood. Didn't you go out and end up in Los Angeles for a while? Yes. And you were uh, had aspirations to be an actress or right. in showbiz? And I did what is known as off-Broadway, off-Hollywood. Uh -huh. In other words, they it was theater. In Hollywood? It yeah. was off theater. Yeah. Uh huh. It was theater work, not yeah. movie not work. Not movie. That's different. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And but I so I didn't really get into a movie. Uh huh. Into the movies. Did so you have asper I'm just saying you're young. Let's say you're 25. You're in your prime in a certain physical way and all of that. Did you have aspirations to become like a movie star? Well, of Would course. You, yeah. You wanted to be a star. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's a common thing, isn't it? It's very rare that anybody achieves that. It's, it's a rare. Tough, tough it, business, it's isn't a it? tough business, yeah. and it's who. In those days, it was who you slept with. Yeah, and I noted in there that I'm very proud of you because you yeah. never did succumb to the producer's couch. It was always yeah, a way for right. you to get the role. I'm so proud of you, my dear. Thank you. Yeah. And Thanks. did you have any feminist uh, leanings or anything at that early no, age? No, at that age, I didn't. You were just leading a normal life of a woman I was, oppressed. Yeah, yeah, but I was a rebel. Okay, you were a rebel. I was a. I was. I wanted better times for yourself, or for, for the for female people. gender, or for everybody. For everybody. So you've always been like you got a line in the book where you said, I don't know if you were just a kid or something about Santa Claus, and you said, and there was the first time I stood up to it, and not the first time I stood up to established authority. So uh -huh. you've been a bit of a rebel your whole life. I yes, think, right? and I. Good yeah, for you. Yeah, they needed. might have even called me a communist. I was never a communist. You were actually. a communist. We were called. Yeah. But I was. But I was on the side of 
the working people. Yeah, on the side of the fo people against the establishment. Yes. Well, good for like you. Like Woody well, Guthrie you and, you know. The, did the, you like Woody Guthrie? Oh, then? yeah. You did, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm, yeah, because he was for the side of the people. He because was for the side I, of the people. My, what I saw of my people is yeah. they were struggling. They couldn't find jobs. My mother was working for two cents a dress. Yeah, yeah. You know. And that's very depressing and everything yes. like that. Did you get involved with the Ladies' Garment Union or any of that kind of Where stuff? She were you aware of the West Coast? The, the thing would burn down on Union Square? What was it called? The oh, West Coast? The, the, you know, that the, terrible thing that uh, so the, many young women when were, killed were killed in, in the fire. fire. Were you aware of that? Was it part of your consciousness? Well, it was, it was before my time, but yeah, I knew yeah. of it. Yeah, you... you it, I knew of it, I certainly. guess what I was saying, did it resonate with you? Oh, because yes. Because it certainly had a feminist overtone. Yes, to it yes, they didn't even leave the doors open they, for... They shut the doors, yeah. For women to get were you, out. You were political? Were you involved in political? I was very political. political? Yeah. Did you ever get caught up in the COINTELPRO and the J. Edgar Hoover and the attacks upon the communists or the left wing in our society that was so egregious, particularly in the 50s and so forth? Well, when I was in Hollywood, they yeah. started something called Red Channels or Red... They were firing people, the blacklist. Yeah, yeah the blacklist. They yeah, were firing right. people because yeah. they heard that they were communists. Yeah, I know. And they were burning people's books, and yeah. it was really well, pretty awful. It's hard to imagine that there was that so deep-seated fear yeah. of uh, justice that the communists were arguing for. I even came back to New York at that time. I you was did. three years in California. You were three years I didn't out there. get into the movies. Couldn't get into the movies. And you then tried. the blacklist started. The blacklist. Did. So I came back. I had a letter of a reference to the UN from a man called Norman Corwin. Okay. If you know the name. I, I, I do vaguely, but not well. I can't He was the first a... radio writer okay. to really write serious radio programs. Really? Well, serious? Norman new? Corwin. There okay. weren't yeah, comedies. A, yeah, yeah. You know, Norman Corwin. Yeah. Was he a left winger? Was <laughs> he a justice person? Yeah, he was a justice person. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. You had a letter of recommendation from, from him. him to Do you the, think you were part of a blacklist mentality who you were, because of your politics, you were being treated badly? Or was it just generally 99% of the people who want to become a star are never heard of? You know yeah. what I'm saying? You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I was both of those. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You know, and I, I was, uh, but I was never that important to be picked out as okay. one of the important. You were a singer. I was a singer kind of and an did, actress. What kind of singing did you do? Uh, blues. Blue, the, the blues? The blues. Bessie Smith? Mom well, Rainey, you know, kind of popular music, popular. popular singing. Did you sing? Like Doris Day Could stuff. you sing a little piece of something now that you did in those songs? Uh, Would you be able to get anything? It's not the pale moon oh, sing that it, excites sing me, it. that it thrills and delights invites me. me. Oh, oh no, it's, it's just the nearness of you. Maybe we should do a duet. What do you embrace think? Embrace me, mm. my sweet, sweet embraceable you. Embrace me, your irreplaceable you. Don't be a naughty baby. Come to Papa, come to Papa, do. My sweet, sweet embrace of all you. Maybe well, we my, do a duet, honey. Maybe, you, maybe my sing do? my voice isn't the same as it used to be. Mine isn't either. You know, so, yeah, when you get to be my age, yeah. it's not as good as Yeah, I'm getting there close, that. you know. But anyway, you saw But, it was but I did try out to be another Mary Martin. Oh, uh, Mary Martin, when she's something You know, else, I was yeah. in a contest mm. to be another Mary Martin. Yeah. Did you like California? Uh, yes, You're I liked it. You're young and strong and everything. I liked and it, it yeah. Fun. But yes, when I came back to New York, yes, uh -huh. that's when the uh, FBI visited me. They did, yeah. 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 Yeah, and, uh, that was for political reasons. Political so you're reasons. Lefty. They you're found lefty. out that yeah. when I was in New York, mm -hmm. I went to a school called I think it was called the Jeff Jefferson School. Okay. Uh -huh. And and when by going to that school and uh -huh. inferred that you were a red. Uh huh. Anyway, oh oh oh, I know what happened. What happened? What happened was when I was in Hollywood, they formed a committee to defend the writers. 
we or had accused. Dalton T Trumbo or somebody, a writer. There was somebody that they uh, blacklisted. And, and they Mr. blacklisted Reagan about 10 or 12 people, the and back, they had a sure. committee yeah. to raise money. I was on the committee to help. Okay, to help that cause. Yeah, yeah, so uh -huh. based on that, uh -huh. they visited me in New York. And what did they do? And they tried to question me, who hmm. are other people. And what did you do? I told them I did it because I wanted to meet the guys. Oh, you did it because you I wanted put to on an them. act. Uh -huh. I oh, did. You did it kind Oh, I said, I did, did it. I did it. Because of the fun of meeting new men. Right, 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 uh, right. You know, I wasn't too concerned about the politics. Man, were you? you were ladies' man? No, 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 no but no. I pretended. Oh, you pretended? Yeah. Let's pretend. Remember Let's pretend. Remember that on the radio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And anyway. you did it consciously with the FBI. Were you, what they call, there's a term called putting someone on. Were yeah, I was the putting them on. Good I was for putting them on. Good for yeah. you. Yeah. So they left Because you have alone. a great, well-developed, yeah. always have had a good sense of humor. Yeah. And then Isn't I, it wonderful to be able to see things from a humorous way? Right. I think we would die up if we couldn't see things humorous. Right. Know? Yeah. So they came and they came investigated you yes. and everything, or they tried to, but you never had to do time or anything. No, 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 uh, no. Okay. No, no, no. For and then so I went on with my life and gradually became uh, got into advertising, uh -huh. became an account executive into the advertising agency. Well, in other agencies, did you have your own agency going or no? Or no, were you working for others? I was yeah. working for others. Uh huh. In a way. Uh -huh. Yeah. When did you first begin to now, get the what idea? happened? Okay. In, I was working in an agency, uh -huh. and I was standing. The agency was located on. Uh, Fifth Avenue, okay. right opposite Central Park and 59th Street. Oh, right there, yeah. the, you know, across yeah. from the plaza, right? right? right at and I was standing there looking out, yeah. and the copywriter of the agency was with me, uh -huh. and he said to me, oh, the women are marching today. The women are marching. The they're marching, is? they're marching for equality. Yeah. And I looked out the window, and yeah. there were women standing in, in line on Central Park West. Right. With signs and things? Yeah. Like organized march. And what I... Year, what year would that be about? 1970. 1970. That's a major year of beginning. Now, there had been yes. suffragettes in the 19th yes. century and so forth. Had you been aware of any no, of that? No, I hadn't you been hadn't aware. Been? I had heard that they were burning bras. Yeah, burning bras. But yeah. it didn't impact on me. Yeah, right. It didn't impact uh -huh. on me until uh -huh. he said something, this copywriter yeah, uh -huh. said something. He, he made a deprecating, denigrating remark about, about women. About women, right? Well, had you not ever heard that before? Had and you never I, heard no, that? and I thought to Why myself... Not go too far that way, I can't see you. Oh, I oh, see. Okay. I <laughs> said... Uh, when when he said they were marching, yeah, I kind of said to myself under my breath, yeah, I think I'll march with them. Uh -huh. It just came out. Well, what? Uh, Wait a minute! Yeah. I gotta finish this. Go ahead, yeah. Then I heard him make a de denigrating remark about women, and then I said, "Oh, now I know." No, I'm going to march. I'm going to march. So that was a, a moment of awakening that was a moment you. of truth. That yeah, was a moment. Moment for you. Of yes. How can you have been so con if I may? Yeah. Let's see, 1970. What year were you born? I mean, were you 22. How old would you have been in 1970? In my 40s. 40. Okay, mm -hmm. so you're in your prime in yeah. a lot of different ways and everything. And you had been political. Hadn't there been a undertone? A, 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 a stat, a Adam, a, who is it? Stat? That the, it suffered. Awareness. Yet. Hadn't you been part of your consciousness uh, being female and so forth? that there were some rights that the women, and the coming out of the 50s where everybody was so normal, uh -huh. but didn't it become part of your... No, it didn't really become part had of you been Had you become involved in the civil rights about the... Oh, yes, the, the, yes. The I marched for peace. Yeah. I marched for the black people. Why hadn't it occurred to you about the, the half of the population that had been treated shabbily ever since the beginning? I don't know. I was so brainwashed you, myself. You were so bra the country was, yeah? yes. It yes. was Betty Furness. Yeah, it was, it was Betty Friedan and the march. <laughs> well, Betty Friedan was part of the thing. But what yeah. I was saying is the 50s, it was, you know, just Betty Crocker, you know, and it was yeah. just, you know, a very, very traditional kind of right. thing. Yeah, right. Which had been 
Did but you? I somehow I was able to make my mark. Yeah, right. You know, yeah, you were able to make your mark in that I world. did yeah. resent every time I went on a <coughs> job, usually a man would try to grab my ass. Yeah, but that's been going on since Kate. Yeah. You think I guess. So, guessed, so yeah. it, it wasn't, hmm. didn't really hit me on the head until the march. Uh-huh. Then, because when I got on the march, did you get I, on that march? I did got on the right march. I left the office. Oh boy, that's part. That should be a movie scene. Yeah. yeah right. Uh -huh. I left the office. I got online. Uh huh. I bought a poster. Mm hmm. The poster said, "Women unite." Yes. You have nothing to lose but your change. Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Right. I carried that. Uh huh. And I'm marching down Fifth Avenue, mm. and I'm feeling yes. 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 This is real. This is it. Right, right. This yeah. is real. Uh -huh. Women have been put down. Did you know, uh, did you know, uh, what was her, the hat? Uh, what's her name? Uh, Bella. Bella, Bella Abzug. Yes. Or did you know Gloria Sinem? Or yes. The movement? It was getting, it was It was building up. We come up in the right, 70s. Right, right. The, the, did you, did you, were you in touch with them in the day that you saw that yes, parade? Yes, I was You'd in touch with them, touch Gloria with. and... I'm a friend of Gloria. Yeah. I didn't become a friend too much of Bella. We were too separated, but, mm. but you she know. She was a piece of work. She was she really, was really something. She had those wonderful hats. And, yes. And she was wonderful a force leader. Yeah, right. And it was through the movement. Uh -huh. Okay. So I just have to mention one thing that happened before this okay. that well. has something to bear okay. on the fact that I opened a shop for women called Eve's Garden. You did. It's an institution. It's right in the middle of everything. 57. Right. And, uh, right in the And middle one of the, of the reasons was uh -huh. that when I was in California, yes. I was walking down Hollywood Boulevard right. and just by chance, I read a book. I found a book called The Function of the Orgasm. That sounds like Wilhelm Reich to me. Yes. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. And I thought, yeah. oh, uh, the, the the orgasm has a function. Uh -huh, yeah. Now that was one of the things that impressed me when I opened Eve's Garden. Okay. Yeah. And so you I, were you were you were impressed if, if intellectually maybe by Wilhelm Reich. Uh, yes, by Wilhelm Reich. Yeah. Did I tell you the first program I ever did in this series way back in 1969 or so? was with a friend of mine who had been at the trial of Wilhelm Reich. Uh -huh. And he had the orgone accumulator. Yes. They were talking about orgone energy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, that was number one. Yes. And I just want to read, if, if okay. I may. If you will, Because this means. was the first paragraph. When I created Eve's Garden, it was three years he, after let us just say, I joined the march. Let, let us say at the outset, for those who may not know, Eve's Garden is a bookstore here that yes. is dedicated to feminism and to uh, and to sexuality and to sexuality, women's yeah. sexuality. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a woman's sex shop, really. Yeah, a woman's sex shop. Yeah, uh, even though we right. allow men to come in. Yeah, you allow are, men. We're primarily geared for women. So let me just read it's this. It's an institution, everybody. 57th and uh, right uh, between six Carnegie and seven. Yeah, right in the middle of everything. Yeah. Right. So this was the first page of my catalog, everybody. Mm. Many years ago, I read The Function of the Orgasm. Oh, no. I've got to put my glasses on. Put the glasses on. It's easier. I know. And I thought, wow, it had a function. Yeah, well, it's been there for... You know, it's only been there for it about a It startled me to discover the orgasm had a function. Was it not only the quintessence of love and lust, it had a function. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes, it well, did. Well, you're reading it with feeling like a real good actress. This and I, right? yes. Yeah. Aside from making you feel good, mm -hmm. it was electrically charged energy that rippled through the body like an ocean wave, leaving its bubbling wake a myriad, a myriad, a myriad of tingling, undulating sensations that swept away all body tensions, bringing peace, contentment, and joy. Boy, those are some powerful words, yeah. 
yeah. bringing Engrams peace they used to have, contentment yeah. and yeah. joy. Right. It was the body yeah. renewing itself at the source of life. Mm -hmm. And then I quote this lady That's here. Good. Yeah, which lady? This lady here is Betty Dodson. Betty Dodson is a yeah. colleague of yours. She was a Betty, yeah. Betty Dodson is a sex educator. Mm -hmm. As Betty Dodson, author of Sex for One, she wrote a book. Is that, is that this one or is a different one? Yeah. Well, well that's the first book she wrote. This is the first book she wrote. It was Betty. called Liberating. Let's see if if we could find oh, the find first the page. Title page, right? It was first Liberating Masturbation, a meditation on self-love dedicated to the women. Yes. Yes, and it's got pictures of clitoris and things. And yes, that's the first book written like to it's tell women about, about the clitoris get. and that they can have an orgasm by masturbating. Yes, that, well, I, I think women probably knew that, didn't they? Yeah, they but were, nobody yeah. read it, nobody yeah. talked about it. It, it wasn't was talked very about, hidden. Yeah, yeah. It was a hidden well, word. But are we still yeah, free? it is the birth I'm talking about, and she's talking about, and I'm talking about it too. It's the regeneration of life. It's like you put the batteries in. Yeah, right. Well, that, that plug in the batteries, and that becomes what is known in the technical language as the um, um, what is the name? Re for restart. That? In a computer, you push restart, yeah. it does a whole lot of things, or shut down. Uh, uh, there's a name for it, and, and, and that's what's happening to me in my, I'm getting too many senior moments. I know what you mean, they creep in, don't they, you know? Anyway, it's the birth, it's the rebirth. So, that's... But you, you, were, you, were, you were intellectually, because you're an intellectual as well yeah. as being a, you know... Oh, the, the Kundalini, they call it the Kundalini. kundalini. Oh, the Kundalini. The Kundalini, yeah, yeah. The well, kundalini yeah. is that force that's wrapped up in the form of a snake yeah. that's right at the base of the spine. Yeah. And that, when that is aroused, yeah through love and lust yeah. and stimulation, mm -hmm. that particular energy circles up the spine, yeah. up the spine, uh -huh. and goes up through the head uh -huh. and out through the head. That's right. And you were you were inspired by the work of Wilhelm Reich. There are many yes, was in key your book. Because Wilhelm Reich thought that all people, including teenagers, uh -huh. should learn to masturbate uh -huh. and learn about sex, and it's okay, mm -hmm. and that society has put it down and made it a sin well, and disclaimed it. By doing that, mm -hmm. they are making us powerless yeah, right. uh -huh. and taking away our basic power. Right, and it's a basic thing built into the, you know, the organism. I right, mean, it's, a basic it's thing. built in, it's organic. Uh -huh. They have even discovered that uh, uh, in fetus, mm -hmm. by looking into a woman's womb mm -hmm. at eight months, mm -hmm. They have noticed that male children get erections, uh -huh, uh -huh. and they have noticed that female children actually touch their vagina an emotion that's very much as if they're masturbating oh, that's in, ra in, yeah. in vitro. And in, it's built in. I, I and you can get that yeah. information yeah. Uh -huh. in a book called The Clitoral Truth. The clitoral truth. The clitoral uh, yeah. truth uh -huh. by uh, Rebecca Chalker. Okay. That book describes the incident I was telling you about. Could they find So that? it's like instinctive. It's yeah, like yeah. eating, mm -hmm. breathing, yeah. masturbating. It's uh -huh. like uh, normal. Uh huh. Well, that's uh, okay. Then there's also the union of uh, yeah, the the purpose of the whole thing is to bring together, uh, you know, through meiosis and mitosis to bring together you know, the, the makings of a new entity and the reproduction. Yes. And uh, so that Yes, and together. if it's that, that brings powerful, uh -huh. uh, Harold, that it could do that, uh -huh. it must be sacred, not sinful. Well, yeah, but it's... All, yes, right, okay. But it's also built in, and it, it, I, I'm not sure exactly where it is, but I think uh, evolution 
evolution itself, we're part of an evolutionary pattern in the universe. Right. And it's not only human beings that have these kind of things, it's built in to a good deal of to the animals. reproductive process of uh, everything from all of the uh, flora to the fauna is built in. It's a major part of yes. the system of evolution and recombining, uh, bringing together genetic patterns in order to have new, new appear, mm -hmm. and also built into new species that would appear. Yes, so. and it's the creative power of, of the universe. Now, there's a, there's a group of people that I'm also associated with called humanists. Yes, right. And mm -hmm. human, as a humanist, we believe that the whole creative process of nature, mm -hmm. the whole process of nature, of flowers, of animals, of everything, is mm -hmm. is God. That mm -hmm. is what God is. Well, uh, well, there's some people who do. There's some humanists who are secular, and they see things increasingly. We're coming to understand things much better yes. through time, intellectually. What's right. going on? We've anyway. So it was between mm -hmm. my intellectual understanding of Reich's work, uh -huh. and then taking Betty Dotson's workshop. Yes. Uh huh. And learning. Mm -hmm. I had to learn that it was okay to masturbate. You hadn't known that up to that point? No, I did it. Oh, yeah, you had. But you, I you, didn't. But you didn't know the meaning of I it. I didn't yeah. know. I wasn't too sure what they, I knew what they called it. Yeah. But I knew it was wrong. Yeah, well, that's what's been taught. I knew it was wrong. Yeah, well, that's been. Built. And I thought if anybody ever mm. saw me mm. play with myself, yeah, unquote. Yeah, right, right, in quotes, yeah. They called it play with yourself. Yeah, right, right. I would be ostracized. Yeah, but it was going on uh, sub rosa or something yes. for a long time throughout the human experience. Right, yeah, right. And, it, and, and, it, and it was easier for the boys. Yeah. Because the boys had their penis right there. Right. right. So it was sort of easier for them. Yeah. But for a lot of women didn't even know they could mm. because their clitoris was kind of hidden. Yeah. And right. they didn't realize that simply by caressing it and stimulating uh -huh. it, they too can reach an orgasm. Well, they could reach a clitoral orgasm. Now, yeah. William Reich spoke a lot, and then you have Mr. Grafenspan or somebody, you had the G-spot. Well, and he made a big distinction between a, a clitoral and a vaginal orgasm, and there was the G-spot that would be, circ would be uh, stimulated. At least this fellow that I did the program with. Well, what they Wilhelm really Reich, don't know, I think, is that's that there's a vaginal orgasm as opposed to a clitoral. But there's one orgasm. Okay, I if you feel. Say so. I, okay. And it can start. It can start from different places. Okay. Because the clitoris is not just the little, okay. little yeah. thing that we see at the edge of mm -hmm. a woman's vagina. Yeah. It goes inside the body, mm -hmm. and the veins are inside. Okay. So mm -hmm. you know, a penis or a dildo will touch, or fingers will touch that. Spot. Yeah, it'd be hard to avoid. And they'll it, yeah. call it the G spot. You could well, call it anything. Graffin spot or something. The G spot. That's well, it. they called it that because the man Graffenberg. Graffenberg. That was was, yeah. was working with women uh -huh. who were incontinent, mm -hmm. and he felt that if a woman could exercise her uh, muscles. Mm -hmm. I forgot the name of the muscle. Yeah. I don't know. I, yeah. Yeah, they just have it a G spot and it's very deeply yeah. embedded. Yeah. If they had could stimulate that muscle, yeah. they would feel they would it would help their incontinence. And what happened was a lot of women began to feel orgasmic mm -hmm. from exercising it. Mm -hmm. That's why they called it the G spot. Yeah, and also uh, we're part of an organ. We're part of a of a universe that got started 13.7 billion years ago, and I think uh, reproduction was not sec uh, was not sexual, except maybe for the last third or so of the uh, evolutionary process. Most reproduct most a beginning of life uh -huh. was not sexual. It wasn't until, I'm not exactly when it did become sexual, there were certain uh, ways of uh, combining uh, genetic makeup uh, to make another new entity and so forth. But the bacteria, it was billions of years that the organization, uh, the evolutionary process was creating oxygen. It was all done asexual. There wasn't oh. any sexuality until oh. about 
I don't know, about uh, one-third of the total time that there was evolution at all going yeah. on, and we're all part of that process. Yes. And then also it became very much part of a morality, because that was creating a new birth, and that was something that had to be controlled when there was no birth control mm -hmm. or anything of that sort of thing. It was something that was obviously taken on by a lot of the wisdom school or the leaders of the priestly class in order to contain or control the human uh, uh, interrelationship between the sexes and everything like that. Mm -hmm. It's been there uh, addressing that uh, all along because it was such a powerful output that you were going to create another human being. Mm -hmm. So that was why there was a lot of stricture put on it because it had huge implications. Then in predatory times, you know, the king and the queen and the nobility and all the class systems were built into that too. So it's a major part of the human experience. It's been there all along and we know it and mm -hmm. it's built into the whole universe, but it began to become recognizable in a new kind of way with this period about after 1970 and the feminists, and then if you put a political context in, the men have ruled over the women by and large throughout almost all of human history, yes. it seems. Yes. And it seems something that ought to be addressed. It's half of the population, and they haven't been able to realize their full potential because there had to be a liberation of That's this right. half of the human society. Women couldn't vote until 1922. I know. Or women couldn't own property, or women couldn't leave their property. Primate agenda yes. and passing on estates and all of right. these kind of things are part of a... Daedal uh, James Joyce, the famous poet, had Daedalus say, history is a nightmare uh -huh. of injustice yes. from which we're attempting to awaken. And you were trying to get uh, that I awakening was, process yes. get started. Yeah. I was trying to awaken the women up <laughs> Good. to realize that sex was not dirty, was not sinful, that they should recognize their power, they have it, you know, uh, do you think we have to do away with the words, you're either a, s a sin or uh, a slut, you're either, you're either a sacred, a or a slut. you're either a sacred goddess or you're a slut, I yeah, mean, that's right. the way they describe well, women. Well, that's the way they don't, and one thing, if I may, don't you think it might have coincided when they finally got around to having effective, easily used birth control? and that that was coming, the pill was coming around then, uh -huh. so that would have been part of what was going to be liberating the feminine thing, yes. who had to be guarded against uh, the huge consequence of, let's say, sen sexual con conjure, conjecture, or evolve, uh, 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 because after all, it's they who become affected and bear the child. It's a huge consequence, yes. but when you can control that process, that was part of a liberating thing mm -hmm. for the feminine side of uh, humanity as well, don't you think? Yes, yeah. right. So they were coinciding with the feminist movement that uh. became very powerful with uh, with Betty Friedan and all that sort of thing. Well, yes, she she really moved women across the country. Yeah, I mean, across it the has world, I think. Across yeah. the world, yeah. right. And right. it's still needed because there's a great deal of oppression yes. against the female sex across the world, don't Yeah, you because think? we still have one great big thing that really hovers over women, and that's rape yeah, and yeah. violence. And, and we to just to, uh, want to want mention... To, we want to get a word in. Yeah, we want to get a word about a march that is being held February... 14. 14. Two days after this program airs. So if you see this program on television, yeah. be aware... On February 14th, it's the One Billion Rising. Uh, the uh, website where you can go is one, one billion, billion rising. Rising. org. Yes. And it's Eve Enslor. Eve Enslor. Enslor. Produced it. Uh huh. And Eve Enslor is the author of Vagina Monologue. Oh, she did the. That became very famous yes. on Broadway. And yes. Yes. Yeah. But that's February 14th. Yes, so we're calling on everybody on that day to go into that website and find out where they're having demonstrations. There'll be demonstrations all over the city calling on men and women and children to come out and protest and dance and sing and celebrate and call the world's attention to the fact that billions of women are still being raped 
and and vi and violated today. Yeah, and, we and have violence to directed against them. Against them. Yeah, and we right. have to stop that. Yeah, right. Well, that's yeah. a good one billion rising. We had the one million man march in Washington. Yeah, right? well, this, this a was billion. This is a billion. What do we got? About seven billion now. So that'd be one seventh yeah. of the world population. Right. And it affects women not only in the United States. Yeah. It's all over the world. Right. This prejudice. Right. It's directed against them, and it's got to be. Uh, it's got to be addressed. And so that's on yes. the fourteenth and of February. February. That, that event's going to be held. Yes. Okay, and that's we're glad, happy to let you know about yes. that, right? Yes. And um. Here, let me show this. Let me show this yeah. good. For, this is the book. Let's show this right now. Yeah. And then we do have a little clip we want to be sure yeah, we get yeah. to, too. But this is what the book looks like in the bookstore. If you can come in tight on that, um, Dijon, please. And this is a Revolution in the Garden, uh, memoir, Memoirs of the Garden Keeper. It's Del, uh, Del Williams, author of uh, Eve's Garden. And um, and 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 who is this? And Lynn Lynn Benucci. Benucci. Okay. Yes. Right. So this is uh, the book, and this will be found at uh, Eve's Garden. Right? Uh, yes. This book will be at Revolution. Eve's Garden or at Amazon. And it's got this is where they got these things about pictures of you and your family and so forth. Really right. recommend it. And again, yes. the, why don't we just say it now? The the the, the Eve's Garden is located in Manhattan. On 57th, on 57th Street. Right. It's not downstairs. Not downstairs. It's upstairs on the 12th floor. Sort of right near Carnegie Hall. Yes. Or, 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 or yeah. On or, the 12th floor. Or uh, open that? between uh, I think 11 and 7. Yeah. And it's a beautiful shop. It's a boutique. Yeah. With paintings. Mm -hmm. And art. Mm -hmm. And uh, we sell wonderful line of books. Right. On, on sex education, right. um, erotica, mm -hmm. erotic tapes. And that's been going for how long? When did they get started? Started in 1974. 1974, and it's yes. an institution now. Right. Yeah. You're right. And there's a great deal of, uh, of material that can be found there. Yeah. I see here, if I could, if you don't mind, no. I see here a photograph. Do you mind if we show No, this? no, that's, that was taken when I was 80. 82. This is taken when you she was 82 Two. years old. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you've got this uh, store, and you're 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 doing that, and you're supporting all of these things. It's a great work that you're doing. Yes. And you're supporting uh, and the liberation. The yeah, liberation I I used woman. to yeah. get hundreds of letters uh -huh. from women thanking me. I would think so. Because it gave them a safe place. Yeah. You know, today you can find vibrators in lots of other places. Yeah. But in my time, you couldn't. Uh -huh. It was uh -huh. only, you know, through East Garden yeah. that a woman could feel good about getting it. And, and it is half the population of the world or more. Yeah. Right? You want to do something with this? Thing? Yeah, I think yeah. I, what I want you to do is just, um, we, leave, we, we leave the reader with... Uh, 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 it's called the Eve's Garden Pleasure Principle. Okay. Okay. Well, this is reading. This is uh, this. This is we're calling on the women, you know, to 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 assert themselves. Well, I, maybe it's too long, but I'll read part of it. Okay. The following pledge was included in one of Eve's Garden's earliest catalogs. And, the, the, and, and I say, loving yourself, loving yourself is essential to a harmonious and balanced life. Teaching, touching yourself mm -hmm. transcends the barriers that inhibit intimate physical communication with yourself. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The act of self-love mm. is taking responsibility for your own pleasure. Pleasure, yeah, right. Uh -huh. And leads to taking responsibility in other areas of I, life. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. Self-love is your pleasure base, your source of power. Mm -hmm. Your birthright, okay. your journey toward the ideal 
of learning to love others. When you feel you have that right, you are ready to sign the Eve's Garden Pleasure. Is there a pleasure? Tr you, can sign, yes. you can sign a document, huh? Yeah. The Eve's and, Garden. Yeah, I That's pledge allegiance to the Eve's Garden Pleasure mm -hmm. Principle. I agree to nurture, trust, and pleasure my mind and body to the fullest source in the knowledge that pleasure is my right. All right, yeah. Uh -huh. And my responsibility. Further, I assert my right to express my sexuality in whatever way, style, or situation feels good and loving to me. Mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. being gay, straight, whatever it is, your yeah. choice. Yeah. I grant my, myself permission to be as bold or as gentle uh -huh, uh -huh. as I wish to be, both in reality and in fantasy. In celebration of myself, and before the goddess of health and pleasure, I hereby sign my name on this joyous And somebody day. can sign onto that, and right? And then they and have the a space yeah. where they sign themselves. Okay, well, that's good. They get that. That's really good. That's yeah. in the book, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Del, founder of Eve's Garden. Okay, Del Williams. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so, good. You, so you see that my purpose here was not just to be a vendor, mm -hmm. but to be a person who carries, to be a preacher, actually. Yeah, right, right, right. I it's mean, I, I, yeah. I have become an interfaith minister well, I have you, myself. Huh? Good, okay. Because I figured, well, I want to go out there and have a ministry mm -hmm. that shows your sexual life as part of your sacred life. It's an extremely part of the human condition, is it not? Uh, yes. Well, listen, one of the things is, one of the troubles is with uh, the universe, the way it's set up. And maybe we can change things like that, but there is a limitation on time with television production. Yes. So we have a limitation on time. Right. And we have a little piece of a clip that we want oh, to yes. show. Oh, yes, yes. Of a thing. Maybe you could, as they say in the business, shut, set it up. Okay. There's a short piece of uh, video that we were going to yeah, show. Yeah, this right? is part of a video that I was in mm -hmm. called The Power and the Pleasure. Uh huh. Pleasure Prince. Yeah, yeah, that uh -huh. was done by two women video makers. Okay. Uh, Amiko and Wendy. You'll see part of it. And uh, so it's just a two, three or four minutes or something. And yes. I think maybe we got more or less. Actually, that up. it's We're a video that was done based on the book. Um, by uh, based on the book and it, uh, uh. And the play, they had a recent play about it called, uh, what was the name of the play? I don't know. I uh, well, you know, it's the story about thinking that women were ill. Oh, something hysteria if they couldn't, or something? Hysteria. Is that right? Yeah, that, hysteria. That's the term that's been layered on. Yeah, yeah, that's the term. I don't that, wonder they wouldn't be hysteria. The women. No, they, they created that. How much women have had to put up with in terms of prejudicial yes. view against them is I wonder they're not hysteria with hatchets yes. or something. You know, yes. It seems to me. And it was based on a book called The Technology of Orgasm. Technology. The well, technology the of orgasm. orgasm but yeah. The technology. Okay. Yeah. Well, listen, let's see what we say. I think it's about three or four minutes. I think we can fit it in, can we? Uh, uh, so we're, we're talking then with um, it, uh, the, the guest of the book. Uh, Dildos so the size that piece of, of tape now America. Okay. You know, and could you but, um, the sound? They don't really have women's, you know, erotica. Right. I mean, erotic well, uh, sex toys. Tape, uh, that's, that's except uh, for uh, in uh, the tape an office be of me on 57th talking, Street, which is talking. probably the highest the real estate, you know, most expensive real estate time? in the world outside of maybe this the center of Tokyo. 57th and 5th. Did you pick out a six spot maybe. where I spoke? And you have to know where it is. And it's called, you know, XYZ Company. I mean, it's really obscure. It's like a brown paper bag on a whole store. And it's in like the 18th floor. And, you know, you, uh, you oh, sort of slink in like you're buying dope or babies or something, you know. And you have to, go past the elevator operator and the building manager and you know, oh, I know where I'm going, I have no problem, you know. And, and luckily there's like printing places and other things 
on the 18th floor. This so I didn't have to uh, indicate where I was going. Yeah, and anyway, so that, that lady, I, I forget the name of, uh, I think it's XYZ. I mean, it's just, or I know what it is, Eve's Garden. That's right, so it, it does have an actual name. Eve's Garden, it, it's almost like, it's worse than being without your computer or your cell phone for a couple of, uh, you know, months. You know, you couldn't possibly, so you have to build up a stockpile of vibrators. You don't want to be caught without a vibrator. That's the building it's in. I've always been an advocate for political change. And certainly when the women's movement came along, women's equality was political. And I realized the connection between repressing women as sexual beings as being a political issue. So that when I opened Eve's Garden, it was not only focused on selling vibrators necessarily, but 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 empowering women so that they could be responsible and get in touch with their own sexuality, their own power, which would enable them to act in such a way as to change the world. So Eve's Garden became a continuation of my feminist philosophy. I went to Ms. Magazine to find out if they would run a classified ad. And um, they agreed to do that. And so I ran a four-line ad in Ms. Magazine saying, liberating vibrators and other pleasurable things for women from feminist-owned Eve's Garden, send a dollar for catalog or whatever it was. And that's how the word spread. Mm -hmm. When we started, we got deluged with letters from women. Typical is Dear Eve's Garden, this is a love letter. I've just christened my new vibrator with my first orgasm with it. She christened it by having the orgasm with it. Thank you. I sent her a little reply that said, and hooray for you. True, the vibrator helped, but you did it. <laughs> so we in turn send you our love and good vibrations. I joined now the National Organization for Women in 1970 and was just filled with That's passion, good. that's really the word, to bring about equality for women. That was our, our, our reason for being there. For those who think that the women's liberation movement is a joke vaguely connected with burning bras and getting in the men-only bars, may I disabuse you of that notion. It is about equal pay and equal opportunity. During the course of my being involved with NOW, I was asked by the then president of NOW, Judy Winning, to coordinate a women's sexuality conference, which I did. And it was the first time that women were getting together to talk about sex. Now, maybe people talk a lot more about it now, but in 1970, nobody did. And to have an open forum where women can express their sexuality was, was a new revolutionary thing. Okay, well that was really interesting. That's that uh, thing, it was good to get that in. And uh, <laughs> thanks for that. And I wonder, I don't know if we can come in tight focus on this. Uh, can we do that with the camera? If you can come in tight on this. This is a uh, part of a logo, right? This it's is the logo. It is the logo for, you come right in tight on this. It's just on a piece of paper. Can you get it so that it comes, is that as tight as we can get it? Uh, oh, okay, now just focus. And it says, e, this is for Eve's garden, okay? Yeah. And 
We grow pleasurable things for. Hold it. I'm no. trying to hold it. We Bring start. it down. Down. It down. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Okay. We there. Eve's garden. We grow pleasurable things for women. That's half the population yes. of the planet. Yes. And also, there's a website. Okay. Yes. Called Eve's Garden. Dot com. Eve's Garden with an dot, apostrophe. E dot v Eve's, e no apostrophe. No apostrophe. E v e s g a r d e n dot com. Dot com. That's our website. That. And that's the, for your website. That yes. Is, uh, 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 In other uh, words, uh, you can shop by mail as can, well yeah. as as go to the shop. So uh, so it's getting better. What do you think? Do you think the lot of and this is the thing that's worldwide, is it not? Because uh, we're in the van, sort well, of, in sense, in New York or in the world, but there's a whole lot of feminine uh, oppression that's still lingering from the historical pattern. Part of James Joyce saying history is a nightmare of injustice. Right. So you think, uh, so maybe the women's uh, sense of participation, active participation, effective participation, is still to be realized even more than It's still going on. There are yet. now chapters in uh -huh. every city in the United States and, and in Europe, too. There's still chapters of what? Of now. Of now. Okay, yeah. now. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Because that's the political organization that's actively working uh -huh. to see that we maintain the laws we've passed yeah. already. Yeah. Like they're fighting Roe versus Wade. There is that. They're trying you know? to do that. And so uh -huh. there's still a fight to be going on. Yeah. And I'm really very happy to see a lot of women in Africa beginning to start their own businesses too. Yeah. Africa around the world. Yeah. Around the world, yeah. right. Yeah. So there's still a lot to be done and uh, <coughs> even even the word, even the vibrator has yeah. come out from undercover because mm -hmm. when I ever started Eve's Garden I couldn't even run an ad that said the word vibrator. Wow, right, yeah. And now you see them in every magazine. Yeah, it's all over, yeah. Finally yeah. we made a story about a woman visiting Eve's Garden that appeared in Oprah magazine. Okay. But That's that a major took view. about thirty years twenty years before it got into Oprah. Thank you, my darling. Right. Thank you so very Thanks. Much for yes. that work you've been helping to help liberate half the population yes. of the world that's definitely needed. And yes. if we can get the other half to uh, hit them upside the head or something to right. pay attention, maybe that could help bring about a better world. Yes. And I congratulate you enormously in such a very, 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 very well led life. Thank and you. sharing some of that here with us on Conversations. It's been your pleasure to have the perceptions yes, then thank you. Of, uh, of Adele Williams. She's the uh, creator of Eve's Garden, and as you can see, an articulate spokesman for, again, let's underscore it, half the population of the human society. <laughs> so thank you very much for viewing, and thank you, darling, yes. again, for such a well-led life. Thank and, you so uh, much. And we have to keep meeting like this. Okay? Yes. Okay, good. Yes, there's more okay. to be said. Please tune in. We'll be yeah. coming back again tomorrow. Thanks again, darling, yes. very, very much. Okay, thank mm. you. Bye-bye. So that's a good book. I tell you, it's so well written. Uh huh. I want. I really. It, you. You. Were, it was co-written, right? Yes, we both wrote. Who put it. all the humor in? Was that you? I think. Oh, uh, it was it. my humor yeah. reflected in her writing. Okay. Yeah. You know. You're funny.